that suits you, the benefits and drawbacks of certain timeframes, and also using multiple timeframes to help you get a good understanding of the market. There are multiple different timeframes you can trade as a trader. Some of the most popular are the daily timeframe, 4 hour timeframe, 1 hour timeframe, 30 minute timeframe, 15 minute timeframe, 5 minute timeframe and the 1 minute timeframe. There isn't a definitive timeframe you should trade. It comes down to your personal situation, how you want to trade and what suits your trading personality. Let's look at higher timeframes first, like the daily and 4 hour timeframe. Higher timeframes involve a lot less screen time than lower timeframes, since it takes 4 hours or a full day for each candle to print. This may be suited to people who work full time and don't want to spend a lot of spare time on the charts. There tends to be less trading opportunities. It can take weeks or months for markets to reach the areas you are interested in trading from. This can be frustrating. It also means if you miss a good setup, you can miss a large portion of your year's overall profitability. Because the candles are larger, representing a full day or four hours worth of price movement, stops tend to be larger, making it difficult for people with smaller trading accounts. If your stop needs to be 100 pips, it is often this much and more on these timeframes. Even risking one pound per pip means your overall risk is 100 pounds. What about lower timeframes, like the 5 minute timeframe and the 15 minute timeframe? This would be considered day trading. Lower timeframes tend to offer more trading opportunities. Although this may seem more exciting, more trading opportunities can lead to more losses. It is easier to over trade. After a loss, a market will likely test another of your trading areas relatively quickly and through frustration you can start compounding mistakes. Trades take less time to complete. In most instances, you are out of your trade on the same day you entered. It requires more screen time. This means it is suited to people who can, and who want to, spend full days at the charts. You will only need to concentrate on one or two markets. Stops tend to be smaller. Often with Zone Trader, a stop size is only 10 to 15 points. That means if you have a small account, you can keep your risk small. What about the mid timeframes, like the 1 hour and 30 minute timeframe? These are often seen as a happy medium. They don't require as much screen time as day trading, but do not require as large stops as higher timeframe trading and still offer a good amount of trading opportunities, often a few per week. Plenty of time to assess and analyse a market before placing a trade since each candle takes 30 minutes or an hour to print. Clears out a lot of market noise that can make lower time frames more difficult to read accurately. Trades can still last days and weeks, meaning you do not need to sit and individually manage each trade. Stop sizes are manageable, with lower volatility markets allowing for stops of as low as 20 to 30 points frequently. What about the one minute time frame and lower? From experience of dealing with students, I find that most are attracted to the one minute time frame. This is because it moves faster and is seen as exciting. People think they will make faster profits and grow their accounts faster. In my experience, what I have found is that people instead lose money faster and blow their account. I do not advise trading on the one minute time frame or lower until you are already a competent, consistently profitable trader. You are beginners and will learn what time frame suits you as you learn. You will eventually settle on one that fits with your situation and how you want to trade. The truth is, if you are trading using a price action strategy, very often they can be utilized across different time frames without too many alterations. For example, for Zone Trader, I am happy to use it on the 5 minute time frame all the way up to and including the one hour time frame. Now let's jump onto the chart and look at how we can use multiple time frames to get a good understanding of the market. Okay, in this final part of the video, what we're going to do is we're going to look at 
how using multiple timeframes can benefit you by giving you a clearer picture of what the market is doing and how it can benefit your trading. So before we get started on actually looking at the reasons, it's worthwhile having a think to yourself of the potential benefits that you can come up with. What I've done is I have loaded up EURUSD and GBPUSD both on the one hour time frame. Now, looking at these markets, what are we seeing? So we're coming in to potentially trade EURUSD. We're looking at recent price data. What we can see is the market coming up, rejecting, coming up and rejecting. So potentially a double top up here with very strong rejection. On the rejection on the way down, we are making uh, lows, highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs. Uh, we're seeing the market potentially moving into a strong downtrend. Yeah, it's a very, very strong move down. We've had a double top. We're breaking down below uh, the key swing of that double top. It's giving us lots of bearish signs. Now, as the market starts to bounce back up here, if we are looking to align ourselves with the market trend, what are we doing? We're looking to sell into the previous swing. So we'd be looking to sell here. We break through very strongly. We'd be looking to sell here. Now we get a nice reaction here. And then as the market starts to come back up again, you'd be looking at this key level once again. As we start to break up, you'd be looking at potential key swing points for potential sells. And what can we see? The market is just making a very strong bullish movement higher. Now what we're doing is by only focusing on the one hour time frame, uh, we are only giving ourselves really a, a micro view of what the market is doing. And we can still be potentially fighting against the overall market or the dominant market forces. So what this is telling us is the market is in a downtrend. The sellers are in control. However, if we start to use different time frames, if we start to move up time frames first, so let's go on to the daily time frame and let's find that rectangle. What we can actually see is this market is in an uptrend. We've got the low, the high, or you could say low, high, um, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high. And what we're actually doing is we are trying to use the pullback on an uptrend as our selling areas. So we're fighting against the dominant force in this market. Now, by looking on the one hour time frame, it's a lot harder to see because, you know, we're just looking at our trading screen. Unless you start to do serious analysis of really zooming out, really scanning everything that you can see, it becomes very difficult to pinpoint exactly what the market is doing. Now, by using the higher time frames first and then working down, so we get our key levels here, we look at it, it's in an uptrend, we then pinpoint our potential support levels right here, we're breaking up above coming back down to test, it's in an uptrend, we're looking for buys. We can then drop down onto the four hour time frame to get a little bit of a clearer view. And what we can see is the market, yep, it's creating these nice strong swings in potential uptrending movements. So rather than trying to fight against the market, what we're then doing, or what we're able to do, is start to align ourselves with the dominant market forces. GBP USD, what can we see? This market, so we can't see this price action. We can see the market has made a strong move down, but then we get a nice strong bounce. We come down, we create a higher low, so higher high, higher low, potentially a strong double bottom here, and then we start to make higher highs, higher low, higher high. So now we're going to be, if we're just looking at this screen, starting to look for buy positions on the pullback. So we'd be looking for buys here. We just get a little move up and then we start to break down. Then we're saying, okay, we're not breaking down below a key swing. I really want to start looking for buys down here. We start looking to buy into the market. And then what do we see? The market starts to collapse down. And the reason is we are using um, a micro view of the market once again. If we go up onto the higher time frames, let's find that area. What we can see is the market is not in an uptrend. What we're actually doing, what we've actually started to do, is first of all, high, low, lower, high, and then we get a little bit of sideways movements, but then we start to once again, potentially break down. We're still making those lower lows. So to align with what this market has been telling us, lower highs, market still making lower lows, 
we should be looking for potential sales. And by using multiple timeframes, it allows us to relatively easily see and identify the overall market forces. And then we can start to look to align our trades with those forces. So rather than looking to buy into this market because we think it's in an uptrend, we can actually see that the market is in a downtrend. So very, very useful to use multiple timeframes when you are doing your analysis. It can really, really benefit you. Um, a very common mistake, especially when you're trading sort of one hour time frame and below, is just to focus on those time frames. It becomes very, very difficult to get an overall view of what the market is doing. And very often you will find that you are fighting the market and suffering unnecessary losses when what you really want to do is align with the market um, and look for those really nice, strong trending movements. <laughs>